everybody. So I'm having a fabulous time here at the National Street Road Association, the 53rd NSRA here at Kentucky at the Exposition Center. And behind me, I've got a Plymouth 33. And it's a Roadstar. It's brilliant because it's absolutely in original condition. And what makes this even better is I've got Tom and his beautiful family here. Can we just introduce ourselves quickly, please? Uh, sure. I'm Julie. My dad's Tom. Hi. How are you going? And, hey, family. <laughs> Having a good time? Yeah. 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 Sunny Andy. Sunny Andy. You enjoying the car show? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I love to see the younger generation here, girls. <laughs> you like seeing the old cars? Yeah. How cool are they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Julie. Yes. Tom. Yes. <laughs> this is, um, it's very unique. It's very unique because I heard a bit of background story to it that in the 50th anniversary, Julie, you had made a beautiful collage. And I think if I, people, the viewers who have been to the NSRAs before, you might remember Julie's huge collage of everybody who had a ride inside the Roadster and it was there on full display. Um, that is just magnificent. Now, Tom, I'm going to ask you more and we're going to get into that. Julie, before we do that, this is so special even to you. Yes. You put such an effort in that in it. I want to know from you, what does this car mean to you? Oh my goodness. It's hard to put it all into a little yep. sentence, but um, it has all my childhood memories attached to it. And it's been neat to see my dad be an artist with his own car and learn to be a carpenter and learn to be a, a you know a body man. And, a, and he knows everything about an engine and he just, it's, it's amazing. I'm proud it? of him for everything he's ever done with that stuff. I bet you are. It's, it's, Her mother was the yes. first. Yeah, and then my parents met yep. with when he had the Roadster and she fell in love with the Roadster, of course. And wow. Yes, it's... it's, yeah, it's the first, it, yeah, the yeah. First, uh, first day I met Sherry, mm -hmm. well, we, I took her right there. So, <laughs> so we were both hooked yep. right away. This, that's, she was sold. <laughs> she was sold. I absolutely love that. Thank I you. absolutely love that. There's so yep. much family history. Yep. There's so many fond memories, childhood memories. Yep. And this is what I love here at Rana's Radar. <laughs> so, Tom, come yeah. over here, please, sir. Okay. And tell us, when did you first get it? Well, I came home from, uh, from Vietnam in 1969, August of 69. And I had uh, sent $200 a month home for this thing, so it was mine when I got here, got home. Yep. And, uh, you know, obviously I did not build it initially, but I've been through all the stuff. Uh, trying to make it safer mm -hmm. and easier to drive. So you sent the money home yeah. for somebody to buy this and you never saw it? Oh, I well, I, I saw it in primer when I was 15 years old. Okay. Yeah. And why the Roadster? Well, why the Roadster? It, it's just uh, one of those things and it was built by a guy that I knew. And, okay. And, so tell us about that guy. Uh, Mac McCord. He, 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 drove, he built this really to uh, drag race. But it's pretty too heavy to, to do any good in a drag race. Okay. But uh, he was, uh, he just passed away himself out in Arizona last year. But he, I had him in it a few times yep. since then. Just showing, the, you know, remember the memories of it. Mac, your car's still running and everything. So well, I'm sure he'll be happy that you've still got it yeah. going on. So what basically the body yeah. is a 33 Plymouth, but it was a coupe. You know, had a steel top door and the five window too. Yep. Uh, but again, he, he cut, the, cut the doors down, welded them shut, dropped it over the frame. Then the frame actually is a 38 Ford, but it's also modified too. It, there's not much underneath that. Now, Tom, yep. I'm just going to stop you for a minute. This is the second car that I have seen today in original condition. Oh. <laughs> that the man welded the door shut. Oh, is that right? This is the second oh, one. Be darn it, so funny. again, no doors, no door handles. <laughs> Why did you do you think he did that? <laughs> well, uh, see, that was this was built about 1964-65, and in those days, the guys that did it. You know, they just, they threw things together. They didn't have all these kits and tools and yeah. uh, And so they did what they knew best, you know. And, yeah. Okay, let's let's try this and let's try that. So, uh, again, it's, you know, my license plate's called The Real Deal. Because the it, Real Deal. It is one of the real deals. Let's have a look here. Yeah. So, uh, because it's not, it's not, <laughs> meant, it's not meant to look like a, a, a 
you know, rat rod. Yeah. Like it's the real deal. This is the real deal. Yeah. So, but you know, obviously I've had to do some like repairs on it and driving it. And so how many years exactly have you had it again, Tom? Uh, well, it's 53 years. 53 years. Yeah, 53 years. 1969 to 2022. 53 yeah. years. Amazing. Years. And in all this yeah. time, what do you do to keep it running? Right. Well, because I know it runs. Yeah, Everybody's getting yeah. rides in these. No, Family right. members come and jump on and they go for a lap, so it definitely runs. Well, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't run in the wintertime naturally, but that, that's, a, that's a 371 Olds, and these Olds wheels are bulletproof. You don't have to do much for them. Now, and how original is the engine? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's uh, when you say original, yep. uh, it's, it was in the car when I bought it, but it's a 1957 uh, three Oldsmobile 371 cubic wow. inch with uh, 30 over pistons, mm -hmm. larger pistons, and then the carburetors are uh, AFB carburetors, and the old guys will know about those because that was the hot so hot rod setup. But okay. now Edelbrocks are, you know, they're kind of a knockoff of the AFBs. But uh, and this has been here for almost 50 years of course oh, with yeah. the car as yeah. well yeah and I you actually, said that they last what makes these ones last now being a car guy i educate me <laughs> well uh also Mill just made a great engine yeah and it had its own unique sound and everything okay and it's heavy it's it's bulletproof and it's bulletproof i've, I've had this thing at 260 degrees and it comes back to life and it's wow. never you know but uh and, and it's it's just just a neat looking engine and it's in, definitely in, in neat. Since 19, 19, these were used a lot in the early hot rods too okay. before the chevrolet 55 56 chevrolets became so popular to put them in everything yeah but the oldsmobiles pontiacs and cadillac in the early years in the you know 49 to 56 57 they were used a lot in the early hot rods mm -hmm. for, so there was a lot of speed equipment for those, uh, and it's, it, you know, it'll it'll sit all winter. Well, no, I won't say winter, but you know, it'll it'll sit there for and six you months. Turn it on you and turn the key and that you let the <laughs> you let the fuel get up to the carburetion. Yep. And you crank it a few times and <laughs> what do you crank? Fires <laughs> well, I meant cranking the engine. Okay, I'm thinking crank you're you're yeah, going to tap it with something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it always starts, and it's old timey. So I did not want to go to it. It's yep. an old style generator, a an real old generator. Old style generator. Yeah, because most everything now you, they use an alternator. Yeah. Because it's more efficient. But this, you know, it would ruin this to put an alternator on this. And then. It's brilliant. The uh, the front end is chrome here. That's that's all 44, 44 style design. And what they call a wish a split wishbone see this this yeah it does look like a wishbone yeah, doesn't well, it see, see, <laughs> see they came together in forge they came together like that right and pivoted but the hot rodders they split it apart and made uh okay. made a spot there to, to hang it and is that just the design of it or is that that's a server purpose uh it, it was just it was a hot rod thing Okay. That they did in the uh, 50s, 60s, and yep. they still do it a lot, but usually, but this is what, that's what they call a split wishbone. Because again, it used to come right in the center of the car, and then so then they they heat it, bring it out, so it's just kind of cooler looking, <laughs> and it leaves it leaves you room for a lower engine and transmission. Yep. I was just gonna say because yeah. it does widen the yeah. space over here. Now, the uh, grill shell, this is kind of a Heinz 57 car, you might say. A uh, what kind of Heinz 57, that's just kind of a, a slang, you know, Heinz 57, that they talk, they 57 different things into Heinz ketchup, you know. There whatever. you go, see, I may not have known this, oh, but I yeah. guarantee you that my viewers would have yeah, known they'll, they'll, yeah, Heinz Now 57. I know it too. <laughs> but see, again, in the, in the 50s and the 60s, when all this hot rod really cranked on, after World War II, really, these yeah. guys coming home service in World War II. So they just found stuff and put it together. Yeah. And went street racing or Bonneville racing or whatever. Wow. But this is not a this is not a race car. 
it, it sounds good no yeah. you know what i love tom that every time you are talking about any part of this car you are smiling <laughs> you love this and oh yeah it just i can just see it is taking you back and <laughs> Yeah. And that's why you kept it for so long yeah. and you haven't touched anything even the inside here well, it's been obviously it's going to have a bit of wear and tear it needs to be done again but, would you uh, do it again yeah it's kind of, it's kind of unique now though because this car is it's it's one of the older hot rods in, in my town yeah so it's like i can never paint it okay i, I can never change it back to because people to know what it is yeah because it's oh you ruined it you ruined the hot rod part you know because it's it's that's the way it was yeah. you know and yeah. over the years obviously you know people people wear out over 50 years yeah. themselves, you know? but uh but i've kept it pretty much like it is i've just changed a little bit on the rear suspension and um you know, you know it's a 34 chevy truck grill shell cut down and like I said, that's a Heinz 57. Yeah. yeah. 33 Plymouth body. Yeah. was a coupe cut down to a Roadster. Uh, 38 Ford chassis changed a whole lot. And then one of the unique parts of this car, the old guys will know about this. It's a uh, Oldsmobile Hydromatic from the 50s. Okay, explain and what o is that. Oldsmobile Hydromatic, uh, it was one of the first automatic four speeds. Oh, okay. And and there was the Hot Rodders guys called B&M and Hydromotive Hydro that they knew what they were doing, those guys. And they went into these transmissions and, and what they call them, blocked them. Right. Because in transmissions, there's, there's places where the transmission fluid goes and to make it harder and shifter faster and better, they blocked this uh, this part of it where where the fluid can only go where where you shifted it right because an automatic you know you usually get in the car and put yeah. it in drive yeah you can't do it with these blocked hydros it, it shifts manually you have to start it first when it gets up the rpm you like you go to second third forward. wow and, it, and it was really really good it would bark the tires just shifting <laughs> From first, uh, from the second to third. Yeah. But uh, it, it's old and tired now, so it doesn't do that. But it's in a heavy, heavy transmission. But it, again, I use the term bulletproof. Bulletproof. You can't, you can't, you can't blow in the train. Okay, there you go, <laughs> there you go. And the things, um, the things that last, the things that are bulletproof, are usually not light. Right. Yeah. Yep. And, and they're then, not going to be easy. Yeah. So. And this was the hot rod thing. This, this deal here and it was in there you can see some of my gauges have gone bad and i've replaced them you know they're not a match set at all we're you know nowadays like it, it's got to be a match set of, yeah you know stuart warner classic instruments whatever but you've made it yours you've made kept it, it as and yours and, then and I, I just know the car i trust the car it's your car uh, mate it's you your know. car so sherry and i we we've, we've had a fun in this car yeah my kids grew up around it and again as you know cars may be the first thing that kind of puts us together but then it's the people okay tell me a bit more about that oh geez <laughs> how did you know how to get involved with the cars well i as a kid you know i i love reading the hot rod books and all that stuff and uh, my brother i have i have five brothers mm -hmm. three of them are older my brother Bob, he, he was kind of a tinker of cars. He wasn't really a hot rodder, but he, he tinkered with cars. So I'm I'm out there at 12 years old trying to <laughs> find the right wrench for him yep. as he's underneath there. And yep. He's yelling at me. Give me that 916. I don't know where a 916 wrench is. Yep. You know? But uh, so, yeah, and I, I love to read and uh, I love the hot rod. So you stuff. just grew up with it? Yeah, I just kind of grew up with it. Yep. I never really met other guys like me until I was about middle age, middle of teenager. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was hooked. I mean, there's only about three of us in my high school class that we, we call gearheads. Gearheads, yes, gearheads. of course. But you know, we kind of hooked together. But it's nice because then you come to these shows oh, and yeah. you meet the car culture here. You meet the yeah. people, other people who are so passionate as well. Yeah. 
and as I always say, everyone's car is special and unique to them because it, of the story and background it, behind it. It's a real part, you know, you know people in so this then, car culture, they're the nicest people in the world. I agree. You know, uh, they're, most of them are all family oriented anyway. Yep. And my kids, like I said, they go with us when they were early. And, yep. I don't know, it just seemed like they learned how to talk to adults. Yep. And, well, that's why I, I love it, and that's why I am here, and that's why the channel is growing, everybody. Uh, do subscribe if you are enjoying the content and me finding unique finds like this with Tom here, because um, let's keep it going. I know that the American car shows is just phenomenal. Do you want to take a ride? Do I want to take a ride? I do want to take oh, okay. a ride. We're going to go for a ride so we can actually hear the engine and um, see what it's like sitting You won't have to hear us, though. I got the headers open. <laughs> Yep, so you won't hear Sorry. us. That's all right. <laughs> we won't do much talking, but we'll take a quick yeah, lap just yeah. to see what it's like. Okay. And you know what you're going to find interesting? Don't laugh at me, but I'm going to have to try and get inside this. Yay! She's a, she's a Roadster family. <laughs> got an Aussie. You got an Aussie? Yeah. Look at you.
thank you so You're much welcome. again. Thank that was you. amazing. Did you have a good time? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, Always yeah. special with the headers. Yeah. With the headers. Yeah. Yep.